Hello again everybody, this is the Celtic Forever podcast, we've got John here to go over quite a lot of stuff actually, this is the first chance we've had to talk about the Murrow game and we're obviously going to go into the Dundee game as well on Wednesday night, so we've got quite a bit to go through, let's say hello to John, how are you today John? I'm alright, I'm alright, let's go, let's get into this, we have a lot to talk about this, uh, well, just a lot to get through as you know. Yeah, let's go through it then, John. let's get started. Okay, we bit housekeeping first, hit the subscribe button folks because the subscriptions are very, you know, still, they've not moved in about three weeks, so if you can hit that subscribe button, that would be appreciated. I'm down at Celtic Park just to bring in a wee bit of atmosphere before Wednesday night's game, in case somebody's wondering why I'm down here. Uh, right, John, that's enough of the housekeeping. By the way, nobody won the competition this week again, so that's the third week in a row, nobody's won the competition. So let's uh, let's try a wee bit harder to get some of these prizes shifted, folks. Um, we'll do the competition on Wednesday uh, with, the, with the, the, the the post-match, or I'll do a wee separate video, if you want, uh, on the YouTube reels um, for the competition. So look out for that, folks, at your notification bell. You'll get a wee notification when that's uploaded. Now, John, let's get into some of the Marvel game chat then. Obviously, right away. Um, in fact, let's get into some wee bit of news first then, instead, John, because Adam Eder, Obviously got injured in the Motherwell game. Um, he's getting a scan today, John. So it looks quite serious, this one, I think. Hopefully these results come back clear. But he's getting a scan. So he's obviously still in a lot of pain. Maybe the swelling's not went down. I don't know. But he's getting a scan today anyway, John. Uh, just an, an animalistic tackle. Um, it really was for this guy, Gordon. Liam Gordon, John, from Motherwell. He was brought on for that purpose alone. You know, to, to make his mark on the game. Um, and we're going to get to Kettlewell as well, folks. Don't worry about that. But John, uh, big Adam Eder going for a scan today. Aye, uh, look, we just hope he's okay. Adam Eder, uh, we really need him in the team. He's, you know, he's important to the team. We need two strikers right now. We've only got one striker, and uh, if we lose him, it's, it's it's a hard slog, you know. Especially these all these games coming up: Europe, the Cup, uh, the League. All these competitions, uh, and we need all our best players available. That it, it, it was a brutal tackle. I, I'm not going to uh, mince my words when we come around to talking about it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's coming up in a wee minute, John. Just quick news uh, headlines today, really, if you like. Uh, Celtic have slapped an 8 million Bernabeu fee. Uh, no chance of getting that, I don't think, John. So Celtic need to be careful they don't price themselves out of. Um, Selling Bernabeu, because uh, we're never going to get eight million for them, are we? I don't know. Celtic's been quite lucky with transfer fees, isn't they? But uh, eight million quid. I like Bernabeu. I think he's a half decent wee player. Um, but I don't think he's an eight million pound player, Xander. Maybe three and a half, four maximum. Uh, I mean, we want him off the books, John. He's not going to get a game for Celtic, is he? So we just want him off the books. But. Uh, Anyway, that's that. We'll just move on quickly, John. Um, we'll see what happens with that, I suppose. Um, so, we'll cover either. We'll cover Bernabe. Uh, a couple of wee results I wanted to quickly run through before we get to the Motherwell game. Leipzig won 3 1 at the weekend, didn't they? So, um, th- they're on forum, obviously. All the teams that we play are always on forum. Uh, they play Leipzig play St. Pauli today in the cup game, or tonight, if you like, in the cup game. So, we'll keep an eye on that one as well. Leipzig against St. Pauli. Obviously, that's who we're up next. Leipzig in the Champions League. Uh, Celtic B played the other one today, John Hearts one, Celtic two, so a good result for the Celtic B. Aye, I never knew anything about that, but aye, well done. Yeah, yeah, good result for the lads. Good to get to see them back on winning ways. And the reason why we've not mentioned the Celtic ladies in the last week or two, John, is because the ladies are on an international break just now. So there's no Celtic ladies at the moment. There's a big tournament going on just now with the Celtic, but no, the Celtic ladies, the ladies in general. So but I've not been mentioning uh, the Celtic ladies uh, for a week or two, John. So that's the reason why, in case anybody was wondering. All right, John, let's get to this Motherwell game. A wee bit of post-match. No much post-match, John. Just a wee, a wee quick one on it. Goals from Luke McEwen, Alistair Johnson and Adam Eda. Comfortable enough. 3 nothing one for Celtic. Uh, the scoreline looks good. But Motherwell came out as early, John, hitting the bar and hitting the post in the first five minutes. Aye. Uh, that boy... What's his name? Lennon, Lennon Miller, is it? Uh, yeah, Lennon Miller, John, the son of Lee Miller, ex hearts player. Right. Uh, well, if he can, he scored into an open goal for 
however far out that was, 20 years, whatever. Look, I think the boy's overrated. I've heard, heard paving, people raving about him. But if you can hit an open goal, there's nobody there to beat but an open goal and he hits the post. That's no good finishing, is it? No, John, it's funny to say that about the, the Lennon Miller, you know, over, overrated. You know, he's had a half-decent game against Celtic, fair enough. But we've got some people, you know, saying sign him, sign him. You know, some podcasts actually saying sign him, sign him. You can't go signing players on one good game against Celtic. I know he's a decent player and he's probably had a few decent games, but, you know, come on, calm down, folks. Um, because he's, he's hit the post and hit the bar against Celtic, it doesn't mean to say we go out and sign him, albeit he is a decent wee player. Um, <laughs> so I just thought that was quite funny. Um, but no, John, uh, decent goal for Luke McCowan. John, nice wee finish there for the boy, and it's good to see him getting a start. Callum, Callum Gregor obviously had that uh, slight injury. Uh, but McCowan came in, scored the scored the goals, no done sell any harm, definitely there, John. A nice wee finish. Aye, by the way, he's a, he's a good wee player, Miller. I just don't think he's a Celtic level. No, yet anyway, half decent wee player, but uh, but if you can score into an open goal, <laughs> then nah. Uh, but I was unlucky hitting the post in the bar. Decent player, no for me. I don't want him at Celtic to be honest with you. But uh, he's only a young boy; he might get better. So maybe in the future. But I let's talk about Celtic. Um, Luke McCowan, lovely finish, wasn't it? Individual goal, sort of one two, then an ind- individual run, beautiful finish away from the keeper. I, yeah, because it was a tough game up until that point. It was. It was a tough game. I mean, it was going to be tough, John. But uh, I think there's a wee nutmeg in amongst that as well. The wee dilly-dally, dirting outside about 10 Marvel players. <laughs> Obviously, I like to over-exaggerate. But it was a lovely finish, John. A very composed for Luke McCowan. So, we'll see. We'll, we're going to touch on the Dundee game a wee bit later. So, we'll, we'll get the predicted lineups a wee bit later on. We'll see if Luke McCowan's in there. Alistair Johnson, nice finish as well, John, from Alistair. A beautiful header and a lovely cross from Alex Valley. Uh, that boy's just impressing me more and more, by the way, Alex Valley. But anyway, John, what a header, what a header from Alistair. Uh, beautiful finish. Uh, very difficult finish, John. I know after the game he said, you, you know, he couldn't miss. But for me, that was a lovely finish too. Def- a defender at each side of him. Gets in between them. Headers it by the goalkeeper as well. Puts it to the right-hand side of the keeper. John, brilliant finish from, from Alistair. Striker's instinct. Um, look, we have seen... A lot of your good players, strikers, missing a lot easier chances than that. So, a striker's instinct from Alistair Johnson. I know he's not a striker, of course, but uh, aye, lovely finish for a our, our right-back, you know, getting into the box. Aye, aye, I enjoyed that one very much. Nice goal. Yeah, that was just sort of a put the game to bed, didn't it? So, um, then he gets the icing on the cake, didn't he? Big Adam gets the goal. That gives us a 3 0 one. A, a decent finish, but it was all about the cross, wasn't it? From Kuhn. Uh just a lovely, a lovely cross and a lovely finish. Um stri- striker's instinct, <laughs> striker's instinct, John, as you say. That was a nice finish. Uh you can miss them. I've seen them miss, you know. Look at this the shot at Parma at the very end, you know, puts it wide, but big Adam puts it into the net. Three nothing, uh comfortable result for Celtic. Aye, big Adam comes on super sub yet again. Um, Nicholas Kuhn, another sub comes on, substitute to substitute bang, pick that out son uh, aye, aye, nice finish for Adam Eder. Uh, just a typical Adam Eder type goal, poacher um, uh, the cross for Valley to Alistair Johnson was sweet as well by the way, that was a beautiful cross into the box, put it right on a sixpence for him. He has a wee look up didn't he, <laughs> it's actually, it's actually int- totally intentionally picked him out and uh, as you say, on a sixpence back of the net. But the, uh, there was three nice goals, actually, John. That was three nice goals for Celtic in the game. Um, but yeah, so that wraps it up, John. So let's get into the controversy regarding this match. This, you know, Liam Gordon. Um, he, as I say, John, he shouldn't be anywhere near a football park, as far as I'm concerned. He's just an animal. I don't care what anybody says, and they can slate me for it if they want. This guy's just an animal, a thug brought on for that purpose alone, you know, to cripple a Celtic player, John. Um, disgusting, absolutely disgusting for this guy. He should be a 10-match ban. I know he's never going to get that. He'll get a two-match ban if he's lucky um, or if he's unlucky. <laughs> but, uh, John, uh, totally shocking. What did you think of that? Uh, yeah, like every other Celtic fan, it's disgusting. It's an absolutely disgusting 
vile challenge from a guy with no ability. Uh, and like you says, was he brought on just for that purpose? Because he's clearly not a football player. That's that kind of thing is it should be outlawed in the game. If you're caught doing tackles like that, you're banned for ever playing the game again. Because he's tried to break his leg. It's plain and simple. I'll try to break his ankle, at least. It's a disgusting tackle. And I've seen tackles like that get in in Celtic players a lot and nothing happens to them. Thankfully, this time, he's had his yellow card overturned. And obviously, it was made a red card, correct decision. And he waited until the 93rd minute to do that when it never made any difference to the game. So... I brought on for that purpose to put in a tackle like that. But he's went flying his two feet off the ground, right into the bottom of his ankle, his standing ankle. I'm very surprised Adam Eder's like never just snapped, to be honest with you. Because that is one of the most brutal tackles I've ever, ever seen in a Celtic game. It's disgusting. And uh, what well, I'm sure we'll get into Kettlewell defending it. I know. Kettlewell, John, let's get into it. Saw nothing wrong. Absolutely, totally, 100% harsh. This is his comments, by the way. A totally harsh, 100% wrong decision. Uh, the player was just slightly late. No intent. You know, the list goes on and on. The the, the rubbish this guy's spouting. You know, Eddie Munster, John. Uh, unbelievable, this guy. I mean, he shouldn't have anywhere near a football management either John he shouldn't have been anywhere near management with comments like that after an absolutely disgusting tackle like that and he's not even came out and uh, <laughs> overturned what he said John he's, he's sticking by what he said this this idiot Kettlewell you know um, obviously he's getting slated everywhere I put my video on Facebook as well and YouTube uh, so I think everybody that's watching and listening to this has probably seen that um, because it's been nothing but hundreds of Disgusted comments about this guy Kettlewell, John. Even more so, even more disgusted than the player himself that committed the tackle, John. So, what do you think of Kettlewell's comments? What's your opinion? It's outrageous for a manager to defend that. It shouldn't be in management. If he thinks that's harsh, he shouldn't be a manager. It's as simple as that. If he, he, he's he's clueless, and it's a disgusting set of comments for him just to say that's there's no intent in it uh, it just looks worse when you've seen seen it slowed down but that's what VAR's there for to catch these incidents that players have got away with in the past as well and uh, that guy is he shouldn't be managing a team if, if he thinks that's harsh it's as simple as that if he thinks that's acceptable I wouldn't like to see his training sessions under yeah, that's it, John. He's, he's just a very poor manager. He really is. Um, but uh, the, you're talking about Val, John, uh, picking up these things. Uh, there was a, a tackle in the Rangers St. Mirren game. We're going to get to that in Rivals Corner. That wasn't picked up, you know, but we're going to get to that, John. So I know I know what you're saying, but Val's there to pick it up. And they picked that up. They changed it from a yellow to a red, as you said. So hopefully he does get maybe a, a three or four match suspension for that. But I can't see it happening, John. Uh, we'll quickly run through this, John. Um, Individual one to ten player rankings, John. On you go, buddy. Uh, Liam Gordon, uh, ten for that tackle. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. Aye. Prison sentence for that tackle. To be honest with you. I, I don't know. See, talking about that doesn't make me feel like gaining out markings for players, but Kettlewell and his uh, thug that he put on the puck to break a player's leg. The, both of them should be banned for the game. It's as simple as that. I was listening to Andy Halliday on the Clyde yesterday. Even he came out and says, look, it's a red all day. Um, that's one of the Motherwell players. But his mother, his, his mother, his manager deems that harsh. But his same players are coming out and saying, look, it's a red card all day. What do you think of that? Yeah, I bet his mother claims it harsh as well. <laughs> no, John, that's it. Anybody with a set of eyes can see that, you know, that it's that that's the case. That's um that's just stupidity for Kettlewell. You know, I don't maybe it's worse than stupidity, I don't know. You know, I don't know why you would come out and say that. And he's seen it, John. He's actually seen the incident. So he's actually commenting on an incident that he's seen. That's that's the that's the the thing I don't understand about it. Why would you just come out and say that after you've seen the incident? Anyway, John. 
Uh, we need a row through this, John. Let's see what he's in rankings, buddy. Well, he's obviously seen the incident in slow motion because they commented that it always looks worse when it's slowed down. Uh, so he's seen every angle of that tackle and he still deems that harsh. So get him out of the game of football. He shouldn't be a manager. It's as simple as that. He's just a creep, an utter creep. <laughs> okay, John. Ah, yeah, they must all look like it was good, wasn't it? That was quite funny. Um, Aye, the- anyway. <laughs> uh, just a snidey guy, you know, just a, a wrongian. If I want to use another phrase, he's just a wrongian, Zander. Simple as that. He hates Celtic with a passion. You can see that. Yeah. Um, so there you go. Uh, good luck to you, Kettlewell, with your, your garbage team, utter garbage team, you know, knuckle dragger players with no ability. Good luck with that. I'd love to see one of your training sessions. Uh, anyway. Player markings, Casper Schmeichel. Uh, hard, hard to mark him up. Never really had much to do. Made a couple of saves, I think. Gave him a six, six and a half. Uh, he was yeah. m- maybe lucky with that one that Miller blasted off the post. Mm-hmm. Six and a half for Casper. Liam Scales, eight. Uh, the big man. Uh, what's his name? Trusty. Yeah. Thought, he was solid, thought he was solid again, Xander. Give him an eight as well. Mm-hmm. And on Trusty, somebody in the comments says, Trusty has a great right foot. I've, I counted the amount of times he touched the ball with his right foot in that game, just for that comment, by the way. He touched the ball with his right foot just to stop it and then turn around and pass it with his left. Uh, so he never passed it once with his right foot. There you go. Um, so if you think he's got a one day <laughs> right foot, I seen that John. I think he was getting mixed up with left and right. To be honest with you, anyway. Ah, um, oh, he's got a great left foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think he was getting mixed up there. That guy. Um, to be honest with you, because I didn't understand it myself. Um. Uh, anyway, let's move on. I was getting confused. Uh, Alistair Johnson nine. Mm-hmm. Thought he was outstanding, Xander. Alex Valley will give him an eight. We guy had a great game again. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Centre the park. Paulo Bernardo, seven. Rio Hitati, six. thought he was quite poor, Zander, to be honest with you. Rio Hitati. Uh, give him a six. Who else was it that started? Uh, Luke yeah, McCown, was it? Yeah. Well, he did a great game. Eight and a half for Luke McCown. Up front, Kyogo. Never really did that much. Give him a six. Uh, who else was on the park? James Forrest, give him a six and a half. He was okay in spells. On the other side, um, with Maida, never did much again, Xander. Wasn't he poor? Just never done that much. Six and a half for him as well. Yeah, that's fair score, John, actually. Very fair. I'll just quickly run through mine. Six for Casper, nothing to do. Uh, Trusty, eight. Scales, eight. Valley, eight. Johnston, nine. Uh, we had Bernardo, give him a seven. Um, uh, McCowan, eight. Uh, Maida, six and a half. Kyogo, six and a half. Boris, six and a half. And who's the one I'm missing out in the midfielder? Natati. Natati, uh, six and a half, John. So more or less six and a half all around for me, uh, apart from the, the ones that stood out, obviously. Uh, which brings us to the man of the match, John. Who's your man of the match? AJ, Alistair Johnson, all day, Xander. He just he wore like, he, he did the captain's armband proud. It was it was strange to see him wearing the captain's armband, but I've always says he is the Scott Brown of this Celtic era. He is a solid yeah. player. And if he was a central midfielder, I'd be happy with that, Xander. I think he's a solid player, absolutely brilliant. Nine for him. He's man of the match. Yeah, and he's just got a cracking smile, is not he, John? You've seen him at the end of the game. I just love Alistair Johnston. He just brings a wee bit of something different to the Celtic team, didn't he? And we miss him when he's not there, didn't we? So uh, I'll quick, uh, I'll quickly give you my man in the match. Yeah, it's got to be Alistair. I was just thinking if there's anybody else that stood out as much as him. Obviously, Trusty, Scales, Valley. But the defence again, wouldn't it? Um, um, Luke McCowan had a good game as well. Uh, yeah, but it's got to be Alistair for me, John. Uh, man in the match, uh, both agreeing with that. Uh, just before we move on, then, John, the, what did you think of the manager putting scales at left back? 
with uh, we spoke about this as well in the the, po- the preview, didn't we? Uh, Cameron Carter Vickers and Trusty in the scales position. John, what did you think of that? I know it wasn't for long, it was only 10 minutes, wasn't it? But it was good to see. Ah, it's good to see, really good to see. I thought they performed well. We obviously, big Carter Vickers. He's just back for a bad injury, so it's going to take him time to get up to speed. Um, but I, I, they played quite well together. But I prefer Scales in that position all day. Um, Scales at left back. I don't think that's going to work for me. He's no good pace to get back and chase back. He's no get much pace, so I don't think Liam Scales at left back would work. To be honest with you, Xander, I think uh, I want Scales in every game that we play. And I'd love him to stay at the left centre back, and I'm afraid uh, Trusty's going to have to find a place on the bench. You know, if it, he's a he's a good defender, Trusty. What I've seen the last couple of games for him, he's been a colossus as well. Beside Liam Scales, so uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe you'll see more of Carter Vickers on the bench. I don't know. I don't think so though. Yeah, yeah, Jab, we'll just go to wait and see because we don't know what the manager's got planned. I don't I think you're right though. I don't think you're gonna see skills of left back. That's that was just a bit of cover there, wasn't it? Uh yeah, but it was good to see, you know, the two American lads at centre half positions in the proper positions. So um we're gonna to get to the preview in a wee minute, John. But before that, I just want to quickly we were do- well done Bruno Watch, be quick well done Bruno Watch. I won the one over the right the weekend, so he's back to winning ways, Scott Brown. We we'll love him, but just keep an eye on it, and we'll always uh, have a wee segment for for Bruni, just to keep a wee eye on our Celtic legend. Uh, right, John, let's get to this big preview then. Dundee, this you know this is a massive game. We don't want it's a massive game as regards to you know getting the three points. We must get the three points because obviously over at Petodre, something's got to give between Rangers and Aberdeen. So something's got to give there. We're going to get into that in Rivals Corner, John, a wee bit more, but. Let's touch on the game itself, Celtic Dundee, right? So, Ross Hardy, he's the referee. Matt McDermott, he's on the VAR. That's your officials for the game. The game's not on TV, but the Celtic are offering a pay-per-view subscription package for viewers in the UK. That's twelve ninety nine if you want to view this one on Celtic TV. So you'll get it if you want to watch. Uh, if you want, sorry, if you want to watch a game on Celtic TV over twelve ninety nine. Um. Obviously, we spoke about Ida John already. I think he's going to be out. I don't think this um, tackle on Ida is uh, it's no it's not going to uh, get any better, is it? It's just going to get worse. He's gone for a scan the day, so it's so big. Adam Ida's out for this one, John. But the good news is McGregor seems fully fit again, John. So McGregor could be back in contention for this one, and Greg Taylor also fully fit for this one. He was on the bench against Motherwell, but didn't appear in the match and obviously big Cameron and Carl Vickers he's fully fit as well John so a wee bit of mixed news there for us Aye I, I don't think Adam Meader's going to make it either for that game um, I think at the very least you're looking at possi- possibly I'm not saying it is the case but maybe ankle ligament damage with that tackle um, and if he escapes with that with just bruising and swelling he's a very very lucky boy yeah, because he's sort of a, you know, he's still on his feet after the tackle, aren't he? And then as soon as he stands on it, he crumples to the ground. Somebody said in the comments that, you know, it can't be that bad because he, he, he still ran on. No, he crumples in a heap. You know, watch the game. <laughs> you know, if you're going to make a comment, watch the game. Uh, no, John, that's, uh, he's out for this one, definitely, for me anyway. I could be, could be wrong, but I think he's out for this one. Uh, McGregor will be back in. Uh, so that's Celtic's injury news. Dundee's injury news, John, is Jordan McGee, he's out, and Joe Shaughnessy, he's also out. Both players are out injured, but apart from that, they've got a full squad. Players to watch, we always do this when we're playing a team, John, players to watch. Curtis Main and Simon Murray up front, obviously, they, both the boys have scored against us in the past. Uh, Momo Seller, John, I wonder if he's had to do with the, the Momo Seller that Celtic had all the years ago. Um, but he's a decent player. Uh, Clark Robertson, um, yeah, they've got, they've got a sprinkling of decent players there, John, but uh, I just think we're going to be too strong for Dundee on Wednesday. Well, I certainly hope so. Never never take it for granted. Every game's important. Every game's a potential league decider <laughs> for me. I, I They've got decent players. I like Simon Murray. I've always liked him. Uh, he's a wee bit older now. He was better when he was younger, of course, but 
Aye. Aye, and I'm look, looking forward to the game. Um, it's good that we've got Greg Taylor back. I don't think he'll start, though. I think he might make a substitute appearance, Greg Taylor. I think Callum McGregor, he'll, he'll definitely start. But aye, so aye, it's good to have uh, the regular players back from injury. Callum just one game, of course. Mm, yeah, that's it. Uh, he could chop and change it again, though. You know, he's he's um, obviously rotating the squad a wee bit, but we've got that injury to Ida as well now. Um, so he's going to have to rotate it even more. We've obviously got Dyson who can play up front as well, haven't we? If I, uh, Ida's going to be out for any length of time. Uh, Dundee come into this one three defeats and one win out of the last four. Celtic are obviously unbeaten in the last four in all competitions. So uh, we're, we're going to, you know, apart from that seven-one defeat to Dortmund, uh, we were doing absolutely fine, to, to be honest with you. Uh, but yeah, no, we're absolutely fine, John. But let's get into some of the the odds on this one, John, because this is something I've never seen before, and you know, in a game at Celtic Park against anybody. So one to nine Celtic to win, John. One to nine, unbelievable odds. It really is. I mean, you can't even get a bet with that to be honest. You one to nine, you know. Put nine pound back, you get a tenner back. So <laughs> it's one to nine Celtic. It's six to one, sorry, seven to one the draw, John. But this is the shocker. Twenty-eight to one for a Dundee win, John. Twenty-eight to one for Dundee to come to Celtic Park and, and take all three points. So obviously been over the bookie stand on the game. Uh but John, twenty-eight to one. I've never seen that from a uh, an away team coming to Celtic Park, not in a long time anyway. Aye, aye, it's a whopper that, and that twenty-eight to one. Yeah, that just shows you what the bookies think. But the bookies can get it wrong. We have seen it before. Um, Dundee, Tommy Docherty, Tommy Docherty, Tony Docherty. Um, good manager. Seems to have his team battling against Celtic. He has his team battling against everybody. To be fair, but they'll put up a wee bit of extra fight when it comes to playing at Celtic Park. You know they'll be defending hard. So it'll be a case of Celtic trying to break them down and it'll be a long punch up the park. Every time the keeper gets it for Dundee, it'll be punted up the park. There'll be long throw-ins. All the free kicks will be punted into the box, just like the Motherwell team. Their ability, you know what I mean? I think Dundee's a better team than Motherwell, to be honest. They just always look like a better team. But aye, that's it's going to be a similar game to the Motherwell game. Long punts every player on the park, get the ball, punt it up, test out the defence, but we're going to have uh, Carter Vickers and Scales who will mop up everything. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting, John, because it's all about the three points on Wednesday night because of, of this, you know, game at Pataudry, because something's got to give, and if we get the three points, it just puts us further ahead either way. So, John, let's, let's um, in fact, quickly we'll run through... Uh, it's not very often we do this in the one podcast, is it? Uh, but let's quickly run through your predicted start lineup then, John. What are you thinking? Obviously, we've got Big Cameron back. We've got Cal McGregor back. We've got Greg Taylor back as well. Three players back, fully fit, ready to play, John. So, obviously, we don't know what the lineup's going to be. It's just a prediction. What are you thinking, mate? Schmeichel, Scales, Trusty, Johnston, Valley. McGregor, Hitati, uh, possibly, what's, what's the other boy we signed? I keep forgetting that guy's name, the 11 million pound player, Arnie Ingalls. Uh, Hitati, Kyogo and uh, Kuhn. Mm. I, don't think it's going, I don't think it's going to be a starting place for Carter Vickers again. All right, okay. That's just the only place where I disagree, John. I think it'll be Vickers and Trusty will uh, be on the bench. So apart from that... Um, I totally would agree agreeing with you, John. So that's what I think, apart from the, the Vickers thing, obviously. So we'll wait and see on Wednesday night what the, the lineup's going to be. Um, and a quick score prediction, John? Uh, oh, tough one, isn't it? Dundee always battling hard. Celtic part under the lights, though. It's not going to be a full house if Celtic TV are showing it for twelve ninety nine or whatever. I'm thinking... 4-0 Celtic. Yeah, and John, you got the prediction right. That's your first one of the season. 3 nothing against Motherwell. Bang on with that one. So well done there. Um, and I got three. So we always run through the the, the 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 games at the weekend. I got three, right, John? If I'd put money on that, you know, I'd be a millionaire now. Anyway, 
Uh, well done, John, getting that right. And I hope you hopefully you get Wednesday night's one right as well against Dundee. For nothing, you're saying, John, I'll go five. Five nothing for Celtic against Dundee. Comfortable. We're both thinking comfortable. Um, hopefully that's the case. Obviously, we don't any slip-ups on Wednesday night. That's the last thing we want. Uh, as any sort of slip-up, we don't want any sort of, you know, you're seeing these teams come to Celtic Park and, and defending for their life. So we don't want um, to not to be able to break these teams down. We want to get an early early goal, John, and just settle the nerves. I think if we get an early goal, most eyes will be over at Petardry because that's where we're going now. We're going to hit Rivals Corner, John. Let's go into Rivals Corner. Aberdeen, closest rivals, Rangers, Glasgow rivals. They face off against each other at Petardry the same night, same kickoff time, John. This one is interesting, isn't it, John? So, um, a wee quick word on the St Mirren game before we get to that. Connor Barron, John. Connor Barron is a high tackle on the St Mirren player. Gets away with it. There's on the screen, John. The exact same as Yang. If not more dangerous with a straight leg. You see that on the screen? Straight leg, John. Gets away with absolute murder. No red card. Um, Yang gets sent off for a, a far less sort of tackle, John. High foot. Doesn't make contact. Gets sent off. This one, he makes contact. The players on the on the ground has to get treatment. Um, the Rangers are in trouble, but the referees are making sure that um, they're okay. Uh, I never seen any of that game, the Rangers game. But I'm looking at the picture on the screen, and if he's made contact with that, that's a disgusting tackle, and that's a straight red card, straight leg right into the head. Now I heard, I think it was somebody on Clyde was talking about it yesterday. I can't remember who it was, Andy Hardy or whatever, who says it wasn't a red card. I can't remember that. Don't quote me on that if it was Andy Hardy or no, I can't remember. But one of them on Clyde, it says, no, the players went in with his head down. And that's why it's no a red card. <laughs> well, your head can be down, but your feet still six feet off, off the ground. So he must be, the guy must be about eight feet tall. Going with that picture anyway, John. Uh, so, yeah, the referee is helping them out, John, because it doesn't end there with the help, John. St Mirren are also denied a penalty. <laughs> a stonewall. I watched it myself for the first time today. A stonewall penalty, John. This, this is what I was talking about earlier with the VAR. Uh, one each at this point, John, with 15, 20 minutes to go. One each. St Mirren could have won the game and they're denied an absolute stonewall penalty. There it is on your screen, buddy. Have a wee look at it. Uh, it's just it's a helping hand, and it? It's a dig out when you're in trouble. Uh, I'd need to see the full instant, Sander. I can see the picture on the screen, but I'd need to see the whole instant. Uh, well, I've seen it, John. It's a stonewaller. And you've seen it, aye. 100%, John. He clips him as he's turning him. He's, he's turning him inside the box and he clips him. And the camera actually shows you a close-up angle of him clipping his ankle. So why is it not given from far? I just don't understand that, John. No, I do understand. I know exactly what's going on, but... You know, a stonewall penalty, John, denied, and a red card not given as well in the same game when they're, when they're absolutely struggling against St Mirren. Aye, well, I, I need to watch the instance just to put my own spin on it, but I can't really comment on because I've no seen it. But I'll take your word for it that he's, he's spanned him in the box and he's clipped his ankle, but uh, aye, look, it's a dig out, like you say, that's all it is. It's a dig out for them, they're struggling. It always happens when they're struggling, they get a dig out. The, the red card, judging by that picture on the screen, I'd need to see the full instant, but judging by that 40, that's a straight red card. Uh, yeah. And uh, the penalty decision. I'd, I'm going to watch it just to have a look, just to get my own spin on it, but always to uh, trust your words, Sander, that, uh, aye, it's disgusting, isn't it? They're getting a dig out everywhere they go when they're in trouble. It's always been happening. It's always happened. Um. Uh, nothing's changed in that aspect of the game. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but, but I was going to ask you, what did you think of the, the Dyson Maeda incident? Do you think that was a penalty? Yeah, it's another penalty, isn't it, John? We didn't go through a full post-match because uh, we've got to go through the Dundee game as well, John. But it's another stonewaller, John. It's um, it's just as well we're coming to that game with a 3-0 win. And uh, if, that, if that was a draw, John, and you're, you're looking back at that, aren't you? Absolutely, you're looking back at it. And... The ref's obviously seen them struggling. He's not going to give it against them when they're struggling. There's no chance that's going to happen. And the worrying thing is, beating as the referee the more tonight against Aberdeen. 
Yeah, John, that's just the extra dig out. That's what, I'm, that's, what, that's what we're talking about. You know, it's a dig out when it's needed. They're in trouble. They're in trouble. They're in big trouble. You know, the it's a must win game. Anything other than a win for Rangers on Wednesday night, John, then the league's finished for them. That's the way I look at it. If they go nine points behind Celtic, it's finished. Even if they go eight points with a draw behind Celtic, it's finished, John. So they need the win. So beatings in charge, that's... Um, that's predictable, isn't it, John? It's predictable. But let's touch on the game then, John at Pitodre. Rivals corner, Aberdeen absolutely flying. They get their, they get their win at the weekend, didn't they? Um the one nothing one against uh, Dungeon United. Uh but it doesn't matter, John. It doesn't matter. One nothing, five nothing, doesn't matter. They get the three points, they stay in touch with Celtic at the top of the league. But as I said at the very start of the podcast, John, something's got to give at Pitodre. Oh, obviously, if Celtic win their game, Celtic have got to win um, our game. We've got to beat Dundee first for something to give. But if Celtic win the game, then something's got to give over at Pataudry. Aye. Uh, a lot of the Celtic fans, uh, they'll be focused on the result at Pataudry as well tomorrow night. Everybody will be checking their phones uh, and you'll hear a roar going up if Aberdeen have scored or whatever. Um, so Celtic are struggling and the Celtic fans are getting excited. I think that will drive Celtic on as well. If, if Celtic are struggling, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, if Celtic are struggling, yeah. Um, this makes for a very interesting night on Wednesday, John. It really does. I'm, look, I'm looking forward to it. Um, so, what, what would you prefer, John? An Aberdeen win or a draw in that one? To be honest with you, Xander, I'd rather see a wee bit of daylight between us and Aberdeen. I'd prefer a draw. Yeah, because eight points, nine points, John, it's just the same, isn't it? So... Uh, I'd, I'd take a draw. I'd take a draw. I wouldn't be overly disappointed if Aberdeen won, to be honest with you, but I would take a draw. Uh, but it's very interesting at uh, Pataudry, you know, especially if we get our three points. It makes it a very interesting night, John. Um, all right, let's run through some of the other fixtures on... I had a whole lot of other stuff, by the way, for Rivals Corner. I just forgot to lift my notes anyway. Uh, let's, let's have a wee touch on... The rest of the, the games on Wednesday night, John. Dun United, Motherwell. Uh, what's your prediction, buddy? United, Motherwell. I, I'm hoping for a, a Dundee United one. Uh, I'm going to say Dundee United 2, Knuckle Draggers nil. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 1 0 for United. Hearts, Kamarnock. Eh, uh, that's just off the back of a derby. Uh, what a snooze fest that was, by the way. Hibs against Hearts, utter garbage. It's going to be the worst derby in the world, to be honest with you, Xander. It's pathetic. Yeah, that's quite bad, isn't it? I watched it myself, John. Uh, one each went to Hearts, last minute equaliser. Um, yeah, it was quite bad. But what do you think of this one then, John? Come on, not in great form. Uh, well, they beat Rangers, then they, they lost. So, um, two. Uh, away games are all for Kamarnock as well, John. Back to back away games for Kamarnock. So it's not just Celtic that happens to. Uh, what are you thinking, John? Hearts Kamarnock? Uh, Hearts have picked up a wee bit of form under their new manager. I'm going to say. Uh, I'm going to say a draw with that one. I'm going to say one each. Yeah, yeah I think they picked it up, John. 1 0 for Hearts for me, that one. Kamarnock uh, losing last weekend. I, I think they're going to lose this one as well. Ross County Hibs. Uh, tough game for Hibs that uh, they lost that late equaliser against Hearts as well they'll know being the best of spirits I'm going to say a narrow Ross County win 1-0 narrow County win I'm going for a County win as well John they're, they play good and they play well and a, a tough team up at Dingwall 2-1 uh, to Hibs um, yeah one, a win for me as well there John um, St Mirren St Johnson the Battle of the Saints uh, St Mirren obviously will feel hard done by with the dodgy decisions at Ibrox. Yeah. I think St Mirren are too strong for St Johnston. I'm going to say 2 0 St Mirren. I'm going to go the opposite side, John. I'm going to say 2 1 St Johnston. I think uh, St Johnston just off the back of a week, a win at the weekend, didn't they? Uh, all right, the big one then, John. The, the big one, Pitaudry. This affects us in a lot of different ways, doesn't it? Aberdeen Rangers, John, what are you thinking? And I hope, my hope is it's a draw. Let us know in the comments if you want a draw or a win for Aberdeen. Me personally, I'd rather it was a draw. I want that wee bit of daylight between us and them, Xander. Uh, yeah. But it's a huge game, isn't it? For Celtic to go eight points clear 
and two are here the Aberdeen. I'm going to say two each. Two each. Yeah, interesting. Very interesting, this one. Um, and it's, you know, I, I want the draw, right? I do want the draw, right? It's not very often I want Rangers to draw and stay to lose, right? But I want the draw just for that purpose you just said there, John. I want but my prediction, John, my actual prediction is a 3 1 win to Aberdeen, John. 3 1. So there you go. I've just taken a wee note of all these, right? So, yeah, it's, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be keeping a close eye on that one, as you say, John, definitely. Um, it just makes it for a, a brilliant mid midweek fixture, doesn't it? It really does. Uh, Celtic, Dundee, Aberdeen, Rangers. Yeah, everybody's eyes will be on both these games. Um, all right, John, that wraps it up. That wraps it up for the day. Uh, we'll, we'll bring the comments on the on the post-match, folks. Um, just don't have the time today for the comments. Although there was a lot of comments I noticed on the last video, John. So we'll do them on the next one. Just ran out of time, folks, unfortunately. So I promise we'll bring them up on the next one. Next, uh, with the post-match for Dundee, we'll bring it up then. Um, right, John, your wee final thoughts. What are you thinking, buddy? Well, you know what I'm thinking? Uh, win for Celtic. I think it's going to be a win for Celtic. That's my prediction was 4 0. I'm going to stand by that. I think it's going to be a tough night, though. Aye, but a 4 0 win for Celtic. I think we'll cruise to that victory. Uh, up in Pitodre, I'm hoping for a two each draw, something like that. One each, two each. I'm hoping for a draw, but I'll not be disappointed with an Aberdeen win. But aye, I'm just hoping it's a draw. That's just my personal want as a draw because I want to see daylight between us and Aberdeen because I can't see Rangers catching us this season to be honest with you I think uh, somebody's going to stop Aberdeen eventually Xander so you've got to look at that as well Aberdeen have stopped to go to places like Hearts and Hibs and Kamarnock away and all that stuff Celtic and all that so either we're early in the season but even at this stage in the season I want to see daylight between us and the team in second place. That's my thoughts, Sander. And uh, I think we'll, I think that will happen. I think that's going to be the, the outcome of the two games. Yeah. Okay, John. Right. Thanks for that, Paul. Um, all right. I'm doing at Celtic Park, just trying to build up a wee bit of atmosphere before Wednesday night's game. So, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a full house, I think, even with the pay-per-view thing, John, I think it's going to be 60,000 because it's a massive night, it really is. As long as we get the three points, it doesn't really matter what happens at Pataudry because even if Rangers win, there's still six points clear of them and three points clear of Aberdeen, John. So, um, as long as we get the three points against Dundee, that is all that matters. That, that's all that matters. And then what happens over at Pataudry will take care of itself. Good luck to Big Adam Eder with his scan the day. Good luck, big man, with your scan. You know, this animal that Try, try to end your career. You try to end your career. You know, he shouldn't be anywhere near a football park ever again. Um, but good luck, big Adam. Good luck to you, pal. Um, good luck to Celtic on Wednesday night as well. Uh, and we'll catch you for the post-match, John. I'll catch you later, Xander. Hail, hail, mate. Hail, hail, buddy. Catch you later.